Good morning, St. Saviours, and welcome to church. Literally, welcome to church. I cannot express how excited I am about this week. I am in the church building. I'm going to get to chat to Alan, and we've got loads of great stuff to look forward to. Um, later on, we've got worship from Kirsty. Um, we've got the word coming to us from Elaine, and we have uh, the preach this week is coming from Stephen. If it wasn't enough that we had the full Powell George family last week, Stephen's also going to follow up this week uh, with bringing us a preach this. Uh, so, settle in, welcome, and uh, we're going to go straight across to worship with Kirsty. Good morning, church family. I'm Kirsty, and I have the honour and the privilege of being the worship pastor at St Saviour's in Sunbury. As we move into this time of worship and praise, I would love Jesus' words in Matthew 6.32 to penetrate our hearts as we glorify his name and enter into God's presence this morning. Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs, so seek the kingdom of God above all else. So let's switch off our mobile phones and leave the world to one side and focus every inch of ourselves on his glory right now. And he will give you everything you need. Wow, that's his promise to us. This time of worship and praise this morning is not a time for you to watch me seek him and praise him. It's an opportunity for us all as a church family to declare the goodness of God, to lift up the name that's higher than any other name, the name that set the captives free, the name that gave up his life for us so we can stand here this morning washed by the blood of Jesus, redeemed and forgiven to enter into the holy presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for covering our sin by your blood. We are not worthy, Lord. We ask you to receive our worship this morning as our dedication and commitment to you, to loving you. You are the light of the world. You are the King of kings. We come humbly before you this morning to offer ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice. May your Holy Spirit just flood wherever we are right now, bringing about lives transformed, chains broken, marriages restored, addictions delivered, and the joy of salvation into people's hearts by your presence alone. There is nothing better than you, Lord. There is nothing better than you. Holy Spirit, come. i uh-huh. 
Thank you so much, Kirsty. Uh, it is that time in our morning. We may be in a different location. We still have the same stuff. Um, it is time for church news. Uh, so excitingly, straight after this service um, at 11 a.m. this morning, we are going to be running a prayer session. It's your opportunity to join together as a church family so that we can pray for Reverend Alan, we can pray for Leah, and we can pray for the boys. Every time I say that, I feel really bad about saying the boys, but I'm nowhere near learning every single one of their names. I struggle to remember my own boys' names. Either way, you can come along and pray for all of them. So please do join us if you're free, and we've got to stay at home, so you are free. So come along, join us and pray for Alan, Leah, and the gang. Um, uh, we do have kids stuff this week. Uh, thank you, as always, to Hannah. Um, if you are not getting the kids' activities, it's been six months. Why are you not getting them? Um, do drop us a line at Kids at St Saviour's Summary and we'll be able to hook you up with those activity sheets so that you can join in with little ones. Um, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago and again last week at the Youth Friday night sessions are back up and running. Um, if you'd like to participate in those, if you are a young person and you want to engage with those, then you can. Again, just drop us a line. Thank you again to Sarah and Sonia for all that you do. The email address for that one is youth at St Saviour's Summary dot org dot uk i should know it by now it's written down there just read it just doesn't matter um we also have this evening um the wonderful jamie glencross is going to be bringing us the summer sunday service series add as many s's in as you like um, jamie's going to be talking about the characteristics of jesus 
It is the last in the series, um, an awesome way to finish hearing about the great characteristics that of our Lord and Saviour. Um, so if you are free, come and join us this evening for eight o'clock, or if not, watch it on playback in our YouTube channel. The last one, the important one, so I'm going to check my notes so that I do not get this wrong. We have an annual provocal church meeting. I may have got that wrong. APCM. It is going to be taking place on the 25th of October at 11 a.m. Um, it is going to be via Zoom. Um, you have had an email about it. If you have not had that email or you've not seen that email, first check your junk mail folder. If you do not have it in your junk mail folder, drop us a line. For that one, it's info at St. Saviour's Sunbury. Um, we want as many people there to join and attend as possible, so please do try and book that one into your calendar. Also, if you are not on the electoral roll, then do drop us a line again at info at and we'll be able to get you on the electoral roll so that you have a voice within the body of the church. As for now, I'm about to turn to this young man here and I'm going to have a great chat with Reverend Alan. Thank you very much and let's chat to Alan. Excellent. So I am now joined here by Reverend Alan. Reverend Alan Bauer, it is a joy and a pleasure to be sat here with you. It's a joy and a pleasure to finally be here in person and not just see people on screens, but actually see them in person. So yeah. fantastic. Um, and in the building as well, which is very I know, exciting. I, know. Yes. I keep talking about it. I've told everyone how excited I've been to come to church. I'm obviously always excited to come to church, good, good. but today was a, a particular uh, extra exciting bit. Okay. Um, so we're just going to have a chat for a bit. Um, yeah. The idea of this slot is for the church family to get to know you a little bit better. So um, I'm going to try and find out a bit about you, about your journey with God, and, and we'll try and have some fun while we're here as well. This isn't like a job interview. You've already okay, done okay. those bits. Good, good, you're, good. You're, you're, I, I don't know if you're on probation, but that's not for me to decide. Okay, if I'm. okay. Um, so just a nice, light, easy one. Um, can you tell us who is your favourite warden? I'm joking, of course. I'm joking. Why would I do both that? Both of them. Both, both of them, of course. Exactly. Both we them, all course. know we love Tom. Um, no, yeah, could you open with, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously, we've heard a bit about where you've come from, what you've done, but it'd be great to hear it in your own words. Um, well, my name is Alan. Um, I'm 40-something, somewhere in the 40s, <laughs> and um, married to the amazing Leah. And we have five wonderful children who have too much energy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, despite having a castle to live in, this wonderful vicarage, um, it still seems too small for five boys running around. And um, as you know, I've actually I spent most of my life in London, so okay. this feels like coming back home. And I've nice. lived all over London, East London, Leighton, Leighton Stone, Tottenham, the most important part of London, in case mm. anyone was wondering. Yeah, sure. And, um, but also West London. So it feels lovely to be back and to, um, again, sort of engage with friends and nice. family I've had. Nice. It's definitely very lovely to have you here. Yeah. We have been really excited about you joining, so it's, uh, it's yeah. great, great that you're here. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned your wonderful li uh, wife, Leah. Yes. Um, obviously, you had a pretty significant day not so long ago. Was it two weeks ago? Um, More than that, maybe. Um, talk to us about your big day, your wedding. Oh, my wedding. Well, as, as, as I've said, um, you probably speak to the wrong person. Um, it was all a bit of a blur to me. Lee is the one who will be able to tell you all the details of that. Um, of course, it was fantastic. Of course, I remember it very well. Um, we planned it within a couple of weeks. Um, as soon as lockdown was lifted, 4th of July, um, we needed to get a, a space and through the registry office and various things. And so it happened as a bit of a blur. Um, we got married on the Thursday. We moved in on the Monday. We had just a couple of days honeymoon. Um, everything happened really quick, um, but that week it rained all week apart from the Thursday, but we had glorious sunshine Wonderful. and it was a stripped down wedding with lockdown, yeah, yeah. but it still felt um, very special, very s significant, very unique. Nice. We had um, some of our friends and family that were there and um, yeah, it was, a, it was a wonderful special day and um, um, long, long away today. Through, through lockdown. Nice, yeah, no, it's hard, I, I, like where people have had those occasions, yeah, whether it be yeah. weddings or different celebrations they wanted to have where they've had to hold back on that. So yeah, really yeah. pleased that, that could yeah. happen. And congratulations getting through the whole, the new job, moving house and, uh, and wedding. I think we prayed about it a few weeks yeah. ago. Or having all of those happening within the same week is, is, is a lot to be joyful about, but also it, it comes with a bit of, uh, a bit of stress on the time as well, doesn't it's it? It's been fun, yeah. <laughs> it's been a fun um, season. So talking about things to be joyful about, we've got wedding, um, we've got new job, uh, new, new church family, um, obviously got new house, you talk about the castle, but you, me you mentioned Tottenham and so you've got the joyfulness of the, the prodigal son. I hope that's not too blasphemous, but literally the return of Gareth, glorious man, Bun Bale. Do you want to you talk about how that ranks within wedding and new church and new house? <laughs> uh, the wedding, obviously much more important. Obviously. Much more important than football. Um, I mean, 
you probably shouldn't answer that question. Obviously, it's a yeah. tricky one, but you can answer whose man bun do you prefer, mine or Gareth's? Oh, 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 really? Oh, OK, we can't answer that. Man, we can't man answer buns, that. man buns. Oh, dear. I guess I, I, I shouldn't I, ask that to a man who is uh, yeah, I have, slightly... I, I have clippers at home. If you, <laughs> if you ever want to pop around the bats, feel there free. There are very much two camps with regards to my <laughs> hair. Let's not go into any more detail. Um, so you were at St Matthew's Tipton for yes. five, five and a half years? Yeah, five and a half years, over, just over five and a half nice. years. Nice, so a good, yes. a good chunk of time. So yeah. I think what would be nice to know is maybe a, a, a small bit about what that church was like but more importantly um what was it that god placed on your heart what was his calling for you that he said that now was the time and how did he bring you here to st saviors yeah um fantastic time there and um, it's a place we never heard of and um, i assume that we felt called to be in london and they contacted me out of the blue when i was finished my curacy and um, went there. It was a wonderful church family. In some ways, the area is very similar to Sunbury okay. in some of the ministries and, um, and how we sort of minister to the community through the CAP Centre and the food bank. And um, when, um, when my former wife died from cancer um, after being married sort of 14 years, I started to pray, Lord, are you um, calling us to stay here mm. or are you calling us elsewhere? And I think over just a period of time as we were praying into that and just trying to discern what God was saying where he was leading us um, through friends through mentors and just through just prayer and reading scripture just had this growing sense that God was calling us away so I, I knew he was calling us to something else um, it felt like that season and that door had closed but we didn't know where that was mm. so um, it was kind of an act of faith knowing that it looked like God was calling us elsewhere but no idea what that looked like yeah. um, and then that was throughout 2019 and we came into 2020 and this position was advertised with a few other positions and and I was thinking I'm not sure if I really fancy that <laughs> <laughs> but um, as I started as, as I think God just kept sort of knocking on my heart and and I started to explore St Saviour's and what St Saviour's was about it became so evident that this was the place God was calling us and my first visit here I remember coming away feeling this feels like home nice. and um, Leah independently visited an evening service and she said the same thing she came away so actually this feels like home we looked at a few other parish profiles and we never had that sort of mm. sense of home and this was this joint sense that this is where God was calling us so nice. um, yeah so it was over a period of time just praying into it and lots of people speaking into that and um, it just grew and grew and became very evident that this is where Awesome. God is going to call us to be. It's awesome that you talk about kind of uh, that it feels like home as well, because when we do have the doors open and when we have people coming yeah. into the building, the, one of the graphics that they come into is a, an image of welcome home. And it yeah. very much is something that we do feel that this is, this is home for us, our family, our community. Yeah. So for you to already feel that it, um, it's that's special. And I think that that is definitely God's hand in there. Yeah. Um, what are your first impressions? Uh, I think uh, you, you sent an email out to staff team where you talked about um, Haven and how they yeah. were worried about Haven, but not wishing to put words in your mouth. Uh, what have been your first impressions? Obviously in, a, in an empty church at this time, but getting the idea about the community and the staff mm. team and those that you'll be working with and uh, any kind of uh, initial takeaways? Yeah, um, well, God kind of knows how we tick and how we're wired. And mm. my first visit was, um, it was a food bank day. And I came in and the church was full of people, full of life. There was a big mattress against the wall and I got chatting to Donna, who um, manages the food bank. And I think God knew my heart. That's the sort of thing that I needed to mm -hmm. see. I wanted to be called to a place which is um, really relevant to the community, not just spiritually, but practically yeah. as well, and meeting people's needs. And, and I think that was my first impression, just that vibrancy of, of, of life and ministering to the community yeah. and um, ministering to those who are broken and and speaking on that word haven so that was a word that i that god gave me a couple of years ago oh, wow. and i thought that was for st matthews tipton and i spoke to a few people and they were and they were looking at me thinking not sure it doesn't <laughs> resonate with us and I, and I thought god's given me this word haven and, and the first time i came off the train towards the saviors the first road i saw was the haven and it just felt like god was saying this was the word i gave you a few years ago and then I think I was sharing this with the wardens last week. Um, but I was reading my Bible in one day, I was praying again, Lord, would you just confirm what this is about, what you've called me to be here? And um, the words um, in the Bible in one year, um, I think it was Psalm 107, said, um, God said, I will guide you to your chosen haven. Nice. And that only appears in the NIV twice, that word. So, I, so the chances of me getting that word when I was praying, again, just felt God was reaffirming the sense of haven, which means a place where people are restored, where there's peace, where they're sheltered, 
And I think that's sort of one of the things which has led me to this when I look at what's going on at St Saviour's. Mm -hmm. It's about a place where people are restored, where they're sheltered, where they're broken, are made new. And um, yeah, it's really exciting to yeah. be part of that. Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the things that we, we talk about is our, our vision over the last few years has been radically transforming yeah. lives in the love and power of Jesus. And so I think there's a lot of what you're saying around actually having that kind of restoration um, mm -hmm. is very similar to what we've been seeking to do. And actually, like, um, I'm not saying that Sunday mornings aren't amazing. They're very good. But on a food bank day, that is when this place yeah. pops, right? Like, what a, what a way. Like, yeah. God, God made that happen for a reason, right? That was, that was his design that you saw that and that yeah. you saw the vibrancy and the way that actually this isn't a building with closed doors, but this is just a part, a heart of the community and interacting with it in that sense. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. God bless our Lord, right? Amen. Um, so we mentioned our vision there. Um, yes. I'm not going to put you on the spot here. This isn't where we kind of like turn on the big flashing lights and say, what is it going to be? Um, but looking into the future, um, yeah. hopes, aspirations. I mean, we talk about that word vision. I'm not asking you to recast our vision now, but yeah. do you have anything that God has placed in you or do you have anything that you see as being something that you can see us moving into in the next season? Is there anything that uh, you want to share with us at this time? Yeah, um I don't have a, a massive vision or um, something really detailed. Um, I mean, my, my hope is um, what's already going on, mm -hmm. that I would be able to encourage that and um, release people and empower people to continue to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that I want to encourage myself and people to listen to what God is saying in this season. And so just encourage us to pray, maybe to fast and, and to see what it looks like, particularly with mm. the whole coronavirus and pandemic. But I think if there's anything, um, some verse of scripture which has shaped my ministry over the last few years is the great commandment, which is to love God and love yeah. others. And um, I think we very often focus on the great commission, but actually the great commission comes out of the great commandment about loving God with our heart, yeah. with our soul, with our mind, with our strength. But that's something that God has continued to lay on my heart. And I, and I see St. Saviour is already doing that. But to just encourage us to continue to do that, to, to see what does it mean to be um, whole life worshippers, not just sung worshippers, yeah. that we're totally dedicated. And when Jesus speaks about the great commandment, he's quoted from Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy goes on to say that we teach other people to worship. So I think part of my heart is to to enable and to teach people to become worshippers mm -hmm. in their life, to have that personal encounter. And then out of that comes loving others, loving our neighbours, yeah. the food bank and restoring people, seeing people set free for the power of the spirit. And if I can sort of encourage that and inspire that and help equip people to do that. Um, my, my sort of the way I'm wired is I, I love to see people and grow in their gifts and grow in their ministries and discover what God has called them mm. to do. And if I can do some of that, release some people in this church to make a difference in the area, which is kind of what they're already doing, but just to continue to do that. Yeah, you know, that I think that's part of my hopes and my vision and whatever God sort of lays on our hearts. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Really yeah. excited for the next season we have. Yeah. Um, you did you did mention uh, around, obviously, the, the, the C that you not mentioned, the coronavirus, yeah. um, trying not to focus on that and make that everything. But um, I, I mentioned earlier in the service that this is actually six months since we last had uh, yeah. a, a gathering here on a Sunday morning. And so it feels kind of, uh, again, um, God defined that we should be here six months on actually having our first service coming from the building, not necessarily with people in the building. Um, it's been a hard six months. Um, mm. There's been a lot of time to reflect and spend time with God. Um, there have been opportunities, but they weren't necessarily uh, the plans that we had for, our, mm. for our lives in 2020. Is there anything that you have reflected on or anything maybe that you've preached on previously, anything that you'd like to share with us um, about the last six months and how either mm. God has worked through you via the coronavirus or in your previous church or how you've seen him working through the wider church community? Yeah, I think through myself, through St Matt's Tipton and also through colleagues running other churches, um, I think it's made us reflect on what does it mean to be church? You know, what does church look like? Is it about the Sunday celebration or is there more to that? Are we still church? when the doors are closed. Yeah. I think it's, for many people, it's realised that we can still be church, regardless of if the doors are open, the yeah. doors are closed. And also, um, what's important? What are the, the key things that we mm. should be doing? And what are some of the things which we stopped, which in the grand scheme of things, maybe we didn't need to do, or, mm. or even allows us to take stock and draw that line and to re 
address again, you know, what should we be doing and yeah. uh, look into what the Lord is calling us to do as a church. So I think it's, it's some of those things. And, and the, the danger is that we just try to replicate what we were doing in church online. And it gives us an opportunity to, to maybe do things differently, mm. work out how do we actually disciple people? How do we allow people to engage in worship? And I don't think it's something that's going to go away. I think online church is here to stay. Yeah. Um, it's going to be part of our ministry, even if the doors are open and coronavirus goes. It's showed that we can reach such a wider demographic in the community. Yeah. And um, yeah, but it's, it's working out how we disciple people and, and things are going to look a bit different. And I don't know whether when restrictions are lifted whether it's right just to go back to doing the things we did before yeah. but actually it's an opportunity to say you know lord what are you calling us to do what yeah. are the nuts and bolts the key things for any church in their context in their community yeah, yeah. there's lots of talk isn't there about like the new normal many people have yeah. cringed as i've said new normal i know it's been overused but actually there's a there's that opportunity for a reimagining isn't there yeah. actually yeah. take take some of the really positive the pearls or the diamonds from yeah. this really hard time and actually continue to use them um, as, as God would want us to uh, as we move into the future. Yeah. Um, cool. Alan, it's been a great pleasure uh, speaking to you this morning. I really thank you for your time. Um, we're going to get a preach from you next week as well, which yes. I'm sure we're all really excited about as well. So we get to hear your, uh, your sharing of the word next week, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, for now, uh, that is our time with, uh, with Alan concluded. We're going to just move to a time where we're going to have a short video um, that's going to highlight the uh, licensing that we had on Wednesday. Um, and then straight after that video, we're going to go into some worship with Kirsty before Elaine reads the word and then Stephen preaches for us. So once again, thank you so much, Alan, uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you, Matt. Cheers. Right, Reverend Father in God, I present to you Reverend Alan Bauer, be admitted to the cure of souls in the parish of St. Saviour's Upper Sun. Thank you. So, priest and people, will you work together as servants of Christ in this place? By the grace of God, we will. Alan, will you seek to enable these people to become the people of God? Will you lead them in worship and in service? And will you encourage them to share in the life of the gospel and proclaim God's saving love to the world? By the grace of God, I will. People of God, will you be faithful members of the body of Christ? Will you support Alan and together with him serve the kingdom of God? By the grace of God, we will. I, Alan Cleve Bauer, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith, which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures, set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness, and in public prayer and administration of the sacraments will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. Alan Bauer, receive the cure of souls, which is both yours and mine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Alan, may the God of peace who brought from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, give you vision, courage, and love to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all your work done in his name. Amen. I invite the, uh, the church wardens to lead us to the main door. Shall we all stand and you can turn and face the door as they walk in that direction? By virtue of this mandate, I induct you into the real and actual possession of this church with all the rights and responsibilities belonging to it. And if you'd like to make sure the door is unlocked before you take the key, just know it's great. And uh, that's wonderful. So, we're going to head for the bell.
Reverend Alan Bauer, I install you as the vicar of this parish. The Lord will defend your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Let's welcome Alan. Woo! I've got representatives here, and I'd like to start by actually by um, Norman Hatt, who is the late chair of the Deanery Synod. We're very pleased to welcome you, and we're also extremely pleased, Leah, and your family are joining us here. We look forward to enjoying fellowship with you in the Deanery, getting to know you better over the uh, uh, next few months, and we undertake to pray for you in your new ministry. And now, if I could um, invite um, Lee Herdman, who is the head teacher of Kennington Manor School. Welcome to this community. As someone who is fairly new myself, I actually started as head teacher um, about two days before I had to close the school down for lockdown. Um, I can reassure you this is a very special community and a community that is going to benefit and continue to benefit massively from your leadership and the work of the church here. Having spoken to a number of families in my school and staff, they tell me of the impact of this place on their lives. And I've spoken to parents who talk about lives transformed. So we really look forward to seeing how God uses you and, and this community uh, in the days and years that lie ahead. So yes, welcome. Thank you. The Lord declares this day that you are his own, his treasured possession. Work together as a people holy to the Lord your God. And may God meet all your needs from his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To God our Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Made in the image and the likeness of God, we are fellow members of this community, called to love and serve each other. We greet one another in the love of Christ, and we share his peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The reading is from Philippians 2, 1 to 13. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, to will and to act in order to fulfil your good purpose. Morning Church, uh, great to be with you virtually again this morning. I uh, hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, before we really start unpacking the verse and the reading that we've had for this morning, we're going to watch a couple of extracts from a video by The Bible Project. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with The Bible Project. They make loads of videos about the Bible and Bible study, um, including these sort of introductory and explanatory videos they do for every book of the Bible, including Philippians that we read from earlier. So if you haven't heard of them, definitely check them out. There's so much great content there. Um, we're not going to watch the whole thing now. It's about 10 minutes long, um, but I'll try and make sure there's a link to the whole thing down there in this video's description. You can go and watch it all through uh, at your own leisure, which I'd highly recommend. Um, we're just going to watch a couple of clips from it now that hopefully give us a little bit of the background and the context surrounding this passage that we've just heard. So let's take a look. Paul's letter to the Philippians. The church in Philippi was the first Jesus community Paul started in Eastern Europe, and that story is told in Acts chapter 16. Philippi was a Roman colony in ancient Macedonia. It was full of retired soldiers, and it was known for its patriotic nationalism. And so there Paul faced resistance when he was announcing Jesus as the true king of the world. And after Paul moved on from there, those who became followers of Jesus continued to suffer resistance and even persecution, but they remained a vibrant community faithful to the way of Jesus. Paul sent this letter from one of his many imprisonments, and for a very practical reason. The Philippians had sent one of their members, Epaphroditus, to take a financial gift to Paul to support him in prison. And Paul sent back this letter with Epaphroditus to say thank you and to do a whole lot more. The design of this letter doesn't develop one single idea from beginning to end like many of Paul's other letters. Rather, Paul has arranged a series of short, reflective essays or vignettes, and they all revolve around the center of gravity in this letter, which is a poem in chapter 2. It artistically retells the story of the Messiah's incarnation, his life, death, and resurrection, and exaltation. And then in each of these vignettes, Paul will take up key words or ideas from that poem to show how living as a Christian means seeing your own story as a lived expression of Jesus' story. Which leads Paul into the great poem of chapter 2. It's rich with echoes of Old Testament text, specifically the story of Adam and his rebellion in Genesis 1 through 3, and the poems about the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah. This poem is worth committing to memory. It is a beautifully condensed version of the gospel story. So there's this wonderful poem about Christ at the center of this book that the whole letter is then structured around. Let's just read that section again to remind ourselves, starting in verse 6. I'm reading from my trusty ESV. Uh, it says, talking about Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to focus on and think about some of the, the key words and key phrases in that passage in a moment, but before we do, we're going to take a step back a little bit and look at, comes, look at what comes just before 
and we're going to ask ourselves the question of why is Paul reciting this poem? What is the rhetorical point he wants to make by referencing this early church liturgy? This poem is prefixed with this fascinating phrase. It says, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. That's the NIV rendering of it. Uh, the ESV, which is a slightly different translation, reads, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. The message translation says, think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. There's a challenge. And the New King James Version says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. These are different various translations and renderings of the same Greek text. What they're all trying to say, what they're all trying to get at, is that there is a mindset available to us. There is a way of thinking, an attitude, that we can learn from Jesus. There is a way of thinking about ourselves, thinking about our relationships with others that we have access to, maybe even have a duty to, because we are in him. What is that mindset? What is that attitude and that way of thinking that will distinguish us as followers of Jesus? That is what Paul is trying to teach us. That is why he brings up this poem, because it highlights to us the mind of Christ, which should be the mind of us all as we learn and we grow in him. So what stands out to you about the attitude of Christ? What, in this brief uh, retelling of the gospel in these few verses, what comes across to you? One of the things, for me, is just the lengths that Jesus went to, to be with us. The suffering and the sacrifice that he endured for our sake, for the sake of just being with us, for the sake of identifying with us, for the sake of revealing himself to us. And that is your take home point or your keep at home point for this morning. If you hear nothing else, hear that Jesus just wants you. Not the things you can do for him, not the money or the talents that you can offer him. He loves those things about you. He's put them in you and he'll use them. But at his heart, he just wants to be with you no agenda. Guy talked about this brilliantly last week, catch up with it on our YouTube channel if you missed it, but he reminded us that the, the core of God, the purposes of God, is just to be in relationship with us. That's what the whole story has been about. So how did he do it and what can we learn from that? Firstly, Jesus did not consider equality with God, a thing to be grasped. Now, this is a remarkable thing to read. Paul is teaching us about the mind of Christ, a mind that we should all share in. And the first thing that we learn is to try and let go of our status. It's incredible to think that Jesus, who is God, was ready to relax his grip on that position for our sake. What is the power or the position that I'm desperately clinging to and holding on to because I think my purpose is there, because I think my identity is found there? Is there some status I could lay down and let go of? this morning so that I could be closer to Jesus. And when we look at this word that is used, that's translated as grasped in that uh, version that I just read from, 
and we place that verse into the context of this whole poem, we learn something really beautiful about the way that God works. The Greek word there is harpagmos, and it comes from this verb that doesn't so much mean to grasp as we might think of it, but carries this, this connotation of to seize um, or to take something by force with a show of power. And this is the exact temptation that Jesus was faced with and taunted with on the cross. This is the exact kind of saviour that so many of the Jews were expecting and hoping for. They jeered at him to come down. If he really is the son of God come to save us, surely he can save himself and come down from the cross. Surely he could step into his kingdom in a great act of power. He could seize his throne. But no, that is not the way of Jesus. That is not the way of the gospel. For Jesus, his kingdom and his rule was not something to be taken with force, but with peace, submission. And it is for this reason, for that obedience, that Jesus is then glorified, given a name above every other name. To have the mind of Christ is to learn not to take things by force, but to be examples of peace, trusting that God will honour your commitment to doing things his way and lift you up. Secondly, we read that Jesus humbled himself. Again, this is a really interesting word that can teach us loads about what Jesus is like and what therefore we should be like in response. Um, and again, I'm afraid we're gonna go Greek um, because while some translations say humbled, others say emptied, you might have a version in front of you that says something else. But the idea behind all of that, that all these scholars and translators are trying to capture in English is this Greek word, echinosen. And there's a verb at the heart of that word, which is kenos. And that carries with it all sorts of meanings. And it's a word that appears all over the Bible and is variously translated as to empty, or to make void, or to uh, be perceived as valueless and of no reputation. That is what Jesus put on the line for us, his reputation. He was ready to be seen as valueless, to risk ridicule for our sake. Paul earlier in this passage talks about being selfless, about preferring the needs of others to your own. And this is exactly what we see in the extreme in Jesus. He preferred our needs to the point of being ready to empty himself of all reputation. And what greater risk to his reputation than entrusting the gospel to us. We are a family, brothers and sisters. And I want to say that I'm ready to take the hit for any one of you. I'm ready to lay down my dignity my reputation, to meet your needs, to bring you closer to Jesus. I want to say it, I don't always do it perfectly, but I'm committed to trying and learning. So I want us to look at a quick Bible story where I think we can see all of this in action. We can see the mind of Christ at work in people. And we're gonna look at the story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, who you may know better as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are three Jewish men uh, that we meet in the story of Daniel and they are carried off into exile, taken from their homeland to live and work under the, impression, under the oppression 
of the Babylonians. Now, as well as, their, as changing their names, the Babylonians had a few other demands. Amongst them, that all of these Jewish people should worship their Babylonian gods. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused. And as a result, they were to be thrown into a furnace, burned alive. So in the face of that, let's have a look at what they said. Hear the mind of Christ. This is Daniel chapter 3, starting verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Hear how they don't cling to their reputation. They go on, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Here are three men who did not try and show their righteousness with force, who were prepared to empty themselves and be obedient to the point of death. And most remarkably of all, were obedient to death, even if God would not save them. Here are three men who just wanted God. They were not after the things of God. They were not simply interested in the works or miracles or power of God. They just wanted to be with him. What is my even if? What am I desperate for God? to do or say in my life and am I ready to say even if he does not I'll still worship him I won't turn away Lord we bring those things to you now help us to relax our grip on them help us to know you more that we might just want you not simply the things that you can do. There's a song that um, sums up this sentiment perfectly, I think, and I'll leave you now with a chorus from it. I'm caught up in your prayer. I just want to see Thank you so much for that, Stephen. Uh, a man of many talents, uh, not only coming to us through song worship, but also uh, bringing us a powerful word today. Um, let's try and take that with us this week. Um, in particular, for me, uh, the, the letting go of our status, not being locked into that, but be, by going to God in humility, um, honouring him in all ways. Um, I've struggled with that over this last season. Um, as some of you know, and as some of you have kindly prayed for me, uh, my status of my employment uh, has changed. Um, I've had that taken away from me, and it's been something that has been really um, challenging to journey through with God. Um, but the great thing about it is that he was always there, and that God is with us regardless of our situation, regardless of what we're facing into at this time. The uncertainty of what's in the news, the increasing cases that we've seen, God is still there. God still goes before and God knows what we need. So I'm just going to commit this to him now and I'm going to commit it to him in his name. Lord Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you in humble adoration for all that you do for us 
and all that you have laid out before us. Lord Father, may we be your humble servants. Commit this word to us this week. May we take it on board and may we process it and outlive it in a way that is pleasing to you and is enriching to our society and throughout the whole family of St Saviours and our community here in Sunbury. In your holy name. Amen. Sometimes we're confronted with wars in life, like sickness, unemployment, and it might seem with the uncertainty and restrictions that we have at the moment that we have a big wall in front of us. And it's good to remember the story of Joshua and how God broke those walls of Jericho and how his faithfulness and promise is the same today. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs>
still in your hands This is my confidence You never fail me You never fail me You never fail me Um, I pray that you've had a great time with us this morning. I've enjoyed being here. I've enjoyed participating in this service. Thank you to everyone that has given their time, from those that have given us song worship, to our preachers, to those that contribute behind the scenes. And of course, thank you so much to Alan who joined us and gave us an insight into what he's been thinking. It's the end of our time together now, but it's not the end of our time together. If you do have the time to stay, please do. We're going to continue and we're going to pray for Alan, Leah and the family. And I'd love for us to stay and do that together. If you have to go, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Um, don't forget, this evening you can join us. Jamie is going to be bringing us the word on the characteristics of Jesus. Um, but hopefully you'll stick around a little bit longer. Have a great week, St Saviours. God bless.